Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about the inverse Laplace transform. In this example I would like to discuss the inverse Laplace transform for the case where you have real and distinct roots. So let's start with the example. So what do we have? We would like to calculate the inverse Laplace transform of a transfer function y s which is shown here. And this transfer function has two roots as you can see here at minus 4 and minus 6 and these are real both are real and are also distinct so they are not equal to each other the nice thing about this transfer function is we will see that shortly that these are already the transfer functions already given in a nice segmented form for the roots so we have actually a second order system here second order transfer function and the transfer function has a denominator already given in separate parentheses so that will be nicely worked out shortly so how do we start actually when you see a transfer function like this in this form so how do we start now since this is already given in nice segmented form for our uh, denominator we can use what's called the partial fraction expansion as the name implies partial fraction expansion means actually that you expand it in several much easier fractions is already in a fraction of course but it is hard to determine from this directly the inverse laplace transform which is of course a time representation of your system so how do you carry out and what is actually the partial fraction expansion so let's move on so we have the system again here what you actually do is you separate your system which is now given also in a fraction which is a little bit harder you segment that actually in two simple fractions so what you have is actually this will be transformed in a fraction which is shown here as a divided by s plus 4 so you take actually one of these terms in the denominator and plus b divided by the another s plus 6 so another term of your denominator if you of course have no, several other uh, factors here, so s plus maybe 17 and x plus 20, you will just move on by saying c divided by the uh, segments and you just carry out until you are done. Okay, uh, of course to work this out when you have now two separate fractions, what you can do mathematically is if you place this uh, together in one fraction you can calculate much more easily the unknowns a and b because that's actually what we require to do so if I now multiply the this part of this expression by s plus 6 and also the denominator by x plus 6 those I have actually expression which is then has a denominator which is exactly the same as this denominator on the left side I can do similar uh, form for the second term on the right side by multiplying this by s plus 4 and also the denominator of that by s plus 4, 4. then I have exactly the same expression for denominator for this second term and also the term on the left side. So what I done, then get is the following. So you can see in the red what I have actually inserted here. You can see in green here what I have now actually added here. So if you just divide this out, you will get exactly the same form back. Now, since I have now an expression which is now nicely given also in the denominator, which are exactly the same, I can say that numerator is equal to the numerator on the right side plus the numerator of the second term. So that is actually mathematically equivalent. So you can say 8 is equal to next steps are then 8 equal to a plus s plus 6 plus b times s plus 4 so this actually just you will take this one plus you will take that one since these are exactly equal to each other you can just divide it out and you will have this simple form now the next step is calculate or determine your unknown coefficients a and b because that's actually really necessary now we have now an example or our equation we just we have now two unknowns but just one equation so you might ask 
is this, is this, uh, will this result in a unique solution for A and B? This will result in a unique solution for A and B because we can select a value for the parameter, Laplace parameter S. So what is the way to calculate the A and B then in this case? There are many ways to do this. What I prefer is the following. Just I select a for parameter, I just select a value for this parameter S such that one of these parameters will disappear. So I will get only, for example, A or B in my expression. How can you do this? Now, if I look at this expression, if I substitute for S equal to minus four, this will disappear. And if I substitute S is equal to minus six, this will disappear. So I can select conveniently a specific value for S and then move on to calculate the unknown values, unknown parameters. So if I now move on, just set for example s is equal to minus 4, what do I have? Just substitute in the expression, you will get the following. This will disappear because minus 4 plus 4, just 0, 0 times b is gone. You will get this one and this will be 8 is equal to 2a. That's all. And this is very nice uh, because this is just very simple to calculate. You will get a is equal to 8 divided by 2. And that's just 4. So you have now one of the unknowns already just by using this method. And in similar form you can say, since I have now calculated a, I can do by selecting s is equal to 6 and then substitute that value in this expression and then you will get rid of this uh, parameter of the coefficient a and then you will have only b then you have 8 is equal to 0 minus 2b because this is just a minus 2 you will get a minus 2b and if you now calculate b you will have 8 divided by minus 2 that will result in minus 4 so you have now actually the required unknowns a and b for this transfer function so we have now converted this transfer function or this transfer function in these two separate uh, fractions and now the unknowns a and b are calculated here. So if I now substitute those values in this expression I will get the following. Then we have this. Okay, now why is this expression much much easier to use when we want to calculate our inverse Laplace transform instead of this expression. Now we have a table for our inverse Laplace transform, also the Laplace transform. And then in, the, in, the, in these tables, we will see that this forum is appearing directly and we can just look at the terms and directly calculate our inverse Laplace transform. So if I look at my transfer function table, I mean the Laplace transform, you will have the following table. So you will see the Laplace transform pa pairs. In the last row you can see that there is a Laplace transform which is given here a capital F and the time domain version is the uh, small uh, letter F in terms of course uh, as a function of time. What you see is 1 over S plus A which is just a constant of course will result in the inverse Laplace transform e to the power minus AT. That means whatever you get here for a, of course just a constant, you can just place it in the exponent of the e and it will just have a minus sign. So if you have 1 over s plus 5 for example, you will get e to the power minus 5t. If I now compare these two expressions with this one, just ignore this uh, 4 for example, which is just a 1, 1 over s plus 4, which is actually just a here, the smaller than a, is just 4. So I will get e to the power minus 4. And this 4 is just actually a coefficient, so you can place it in front. So you will get 4 times 1 over s plus 4. So you will get actually 4 times e to the power minus 4t. In a similar form, this is now the 6, which is now the a here in this form. Then we'll get e to the power minus 6a. And of course with minus 4 as a coefficient. So if I move on for the next step, I will get this, which is 4 times e to the power minus 4, minus 4 times e to the power minus 60. And this is our inverse Laplace transform, which is 
given in the time domain. But you also uh, can see from this expression, the result is that this function starts actually at the origin. So if you substitute t is equal to zero, you will have an expression which is also zero. You can say, see that by substituting t is equal to zero, you will have four times e to the power zero, which is just one here. So four times one, minus four times again, one, and you will have four minus four is equal to zero. And if you substitute the value or approach it in the limit uh, for t's uh, infinity or approaching infinity, these two expressions will approach zero. So this system will actually also approach zero. So it starts at zero and it will also approach zero. It will get some maximum, but you can see that this uh, expression uh, result in a stable system when the time approaches infinity. Okay, this is our uh, example about the inverse of last transform where we have the real and distinct rules. I will continue with another example where we have other cases like repeated rules, complex rules, etc. So keep in touch and if you have questions, please let me know.